Let me read you a story about a guy, Nikolai Kamara. This took place in the 70s in the United Soviet Socialist Republic when it was the USSR. Quote, what kind of men are these, wondered Nikolai Kamara? They show joy while suffering. They sing in very dark hours. When they have a piece of bread, they share it with someone who has none. Morning and evening, they fold their hands and speak to someone whom no one can see. And they, as they do, their faces shine. For months, Kamara had watched the Christians who shared his cell in the communist prison. Unlike the believers who were in prison for refusing to deny their faith in Jesus, Kamara was there for crimes he had committed. Arrested for robbery, he had been sentenced to prison for 10 years. He described himself as, quote, a man with no conscience. Excuse me one sec. One day, two of the Christians sat down with Kamara. He told them the sad story of his life and finished by saying, I am a lost man. One of the Christians asked Kamara, suppose somebody loses a gold ring. What's the value of that gold ring when it's lost? What a foolish question, Kamara replied. A gold ring is a gold ring. You have lost it, but someone else will have it. Then what is the value of a lost man, the Christian asked. Answering his own question, he continued, a lost man, even one who is a thief or an adulterer or a murderer, has the whole value of a man. He is of such value that the Son of God forsook heaven for him and died on a cross to save him. Kamara understood. The Christian said to the robber, God loves you, and you're very valuable to him. When Jesus met drunkards, robbers, prostitutes, others who had committed great sins, he never asked them what sins they had committed. Instead, he told them, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. I also tell you, Kamara, that your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. You just have to believe that and receive that and confess. Kamara became a Christian. When he finished his prison term and was set free, he joined the underground church, even though it was in constant threat from the KGB. That's the Committee for State Security. They were in force from 1954 to 91. He became a faithful member of his local congregation. Sometime later, the pastor of Kamara's church was arrested. The authorities beat and tortured him, hoping he would tell the names of the church members and give them information that would help them stop the printing of the gospel booklets that had been circulating throughout their province. He was tortured, but he told them nothing. If he had, thousands of his fellow believers would have been arrested. After he had beaten the pastor repeatedly without success, the captain of the investigation said, quote, we will not torture you anymore. We have another method. They arrested Nikolai Kamara. They brought him before the pastor and told him, if you do not tell all the secrets of your church, pastor, we will torture Kamara in front of you. The pastor could not endure someone suffering for him. He asked Kamara, what should I do? What should I do? Kamara said to him, quote, be faithful to Jesus. Do not betray him. I am happy to suffer in the name of Christ. The captain said, we will gouge out Kamara's eyes. The torturer picked up a knife and started towards Kamara. The pastor could not bear it anymore. He cried to Tamara, how can I look at this? You'll be blind. Kamara replies, quote, when my eyes are taken from me, I will see more beauty than I see with these eyes. I will see the Savior. You remain faithful to Christ to the end. When he had finished seeing that the pastor had not yet given them the information they wanted, the captain turned to the pastor again and said, if you do not betray your church, we will cut out Kamara's tongue. In despair, the pastor cried, what should I do? Kamara's last words were, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I have said the highest words that I can be said. Now, if you wish, you can cut out my tongue. Kamara died a martyr's death. Rabbi, why do you read that? Because I want to honor their memory. This doesn't make me feel bad about myself. It inspires me. 
it makes me realize that I'm part of something so big, so huge, so real. And I want it to be so real. And I want to keep it huge and big and something worth dying for. That's why I think of these guys. And that's why I pray for these guys.